so today what we're going to do is a video on how to set up a day gecko because I know several of you have been asking about that for a while now. Uh, this size cage is a Zoom Med 18 by 18 by 24 terrarium. It's got a solid front door, which I prefer for keeping day geckos. If you're keeping um, any smaller species, I kept uh, dwarf day geckos in a cage this size. The nice thing about it is that the solid door, the gap here, is small enough that if you end up hatching any babies in here, they can't escape. So, the first things, first things first, I'm going to set this up as a naturalistic terrarium or a, a living vivarium. So I've already got a layer of hydrogen. Um, in the bottom of the cage, and then I've got the Zoomed 18 by 18 inch uh, plastic mesh sitting on here to keep the bedding that I'm about to put in from getting into the hydrotone. Put a layer in, spread it around, and then I've got a bunch of plants and stuff over here. I've got wood, I've got cork. So, the day geckos, what you're going to want to do is create a kind of layer system of the places for them to climb and bask and perch on because day geckos like really high temperatures um, and lots of bright white light. So in order to provide them with different zones or levels within the cage for them to bask at and get warm at and to seek out the temperatures that they like, you're going to want to make sure that you provide them with basking areas all the way almost to the top of the cage so that, that way they don't touch the mesh, which is where your light's going to be, and end up burning themselves. So we'll do that there. One of my favorite things, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I like to create little budgets and stuff with in the cage. Go. And this, right here, this is a pothos plant. Um, this is one of my favorite plants to use for vivariums just because the pothos plant starts out small like that but it grows really fast and really big so it'll end up happening as well it's small right there right now it'll end up bushing up and covering this entire back part here and it's also vining so you could have it climb over the other pieces of wood and other decorations within the cage and it'll look really cool Another cool plant to add, these are called Sansevieria plants, and these also get tall. Um, I've got several of these at home, and they'll actually get easily this tall, if not taller. Um, and they're great for day geckos, any kind. Line day geckos, goldish day geckos, giant day geckos, all of them. Because they do get so big, and they are these nice straight leaves, um, they provide really great hiding spots and really great perches for your geckos. To what was your name? Stephanie. Save this from there. Another neat trick is to use cork rounds as planting pots. Because it looks cool. So this plant here in the front to kind of act as ground cover. This plant here doesn't really get very tall, but it does end up spreading. So it'll provide this neat little uh, like bit of color here up in the front to make it look nice a few basic things in there so we can add this which is going to be the lower basking zone here then one of my absolute favorite things one of the best things to use for day geckos is going to be these bamboo hollows uh, they really do like to climb on cylindrical surfaces or flat surfaces right up under the light so you're going to want to have these as close to the top of the cage as possible. These are awesome for them to bask on. Uh, I'm going to go grab some magnetic ledges because those are really fantastic for adding vertical height without having to stack um, a ton of really big, expensive pieces of wood. And mag a one magnetic ledge makes it possible to use a bunch of these. And again, I've kept these at home. I've kept in red dwarf day geckos, the Williams Eye. I've kept in red yellowheads, Cape dwarf geckos, a few different species. So. Uh, that's basically what I have found that works. So we're going to go I grabbed a couple of these magnetic ledges, which are some of my favorite products out there just because they make it really easy to decorate your cage and they're removable, so they're never permanent. You can always move it around, do something different with them, uh, which is really nice and really great if you're still not sure how you exactly want to set up a cage. So we'll put this here. This is another one of my favorite things for geckos. This is the Magnatural, I think it's actually called a gecko ledge. Nope, it's a mushroom ledge cup holder. 
And the reason I like this so much is because if you're keeping day geckos, they're going to need to eat um, a type of food called day gecko food or meal replacement powder. You can use crusty gecko replacement powder or you can use a specially formulated day gecko replacement powder. Both of those are made by Arpashi. Um, it's up to you what you prefer. I use them actually interchangeably depending on uh, what I have more of at home. Uh, you can also mix it in with uh, a lot of the uh, Zoomed mixins, like the mango, papaya, stuff like that. Good way to add variety to the diet without having to spend a ton of money. <laughs> uh, so as you can see, that wasn't a very secure place to put that uh, piece of bamboo. <laughs> Figure out a different way to arrange these things in the That's why the magnetic lunches are great. So you mess it up. So I've got a few different options here for them to climb on and around in. Uh, this one here is where I'm going to put the primary basking area. It's going to be in the back here. The geckos that I'm going to be putting in here aren't very heavy. I'm just going to be doing little uh, little gold dust day geckos or, or line day geckos. Uh, and then to add a few more plants. So this nice big camellia go right up the front. And again, just because this is honestly a, a tank that I built with the intention of it growing in, uh, it's going to look a little bit sparse at first until everything really does grow in and start getting lush. So keep that in mind when you're building yours is that it may not look the greatest right away. Because this is definitely not one of my prettiest tanks I've ever made. But once it grows in, it'll look a lot better. Add water in here. Then, of course, because these are tropical animals, you need humidity and moisture. And what I like to do is add moss as kind of a top layer to help with moisture and to kind of hide just the plain eco birth. Make it look a little bit nice in here, more like a jungle. And then the moss too makes it, you know, this may not have looked that great when I first put it together, but now with the moss in it, it's looking a lot more pleasing to the eye. So now, it's pretty much set. Uh, what I usually do with these cups up here at the top is I put food in one, water in the other. Um, using these plastic cups makes it really easy to keep it clean in there because when the water gets gross or if anything like that, you can just throw it away. We sell replacements for these for really, really cheap on our website. So if you end up having to order food or anything like that, anyway, just pick up 50 of the replacement cups. I think it's only like two or three bucks. So there's that. Now, we've got this all put together. Great, that's the inside. Yeah. <laughs> because these are day geckos, because these are day geckos, you're going to need to provide them with lots of light and lots of heat. Um, I also prefer to keep them with UVB. Not all day gecko keepers do that. Uh, so, it depends on who you talk to, what they're going to say as far as UVB goes. I always had a lot more success with mine keeping them with UVB uh, and heat and light, which is why the bulb that I recommend for this size cage is a Zoomed Power Sun or the basically a mercury vapor bulb. A 100 watt mercury vapor bulb sounds like a lot of heat for this size cage, but in my experience, this actually is perfect. Yes, the whole cage heats up. Uh, so, if you are in a really warm area, if your house is routinely 80 to 85 degrees or hotter, uh, I kept day geckos in this exact size cage with this exact wattage bowl um, in my 80 degree apartment home without them overheating. They actually did fantastic. They bred for me several times. Um, actually, my, day, my electric blues bred for eight months consecutively. She laid eggs. Um, I ended up having to cool them down to get them to stop, uh, which is the other half of this, which is going to be your night light bulb. If your house is below 75 degrees at night, you're definitely going to want a red light on there as well. Uh, pretty much turn have your your daytime bulb or your mercury vapor bulb turn on in the morning, off at night, and have your red bulb go on at night. 
just to keep them from getting too cold. Pretty much all day gecko species operate in the same range of temperatures. For the most part, most of the commonly kept species, you're going to want them to be able to bask at really nice high temperatures, easily 90 to 95. I've kept mine with basking temperatures close to 100, if not hotter. But keep in mind, that's right up here. That's two inches away from the bulb, which they love. Um, but in the rest of the cage, it more commonly dropped down to about 90 down here and then 80 or cooler down here. So that's why you give them multiple places to climb in and climb around on in the cage. That way they've got lots of choices and lots of areas to go. They don't always have to be at a 100 degree basking area. Uh, however, if you want the prettiest, brightest colored, gorgeous geckos, give them a really hot, really bright basking area. You can keep them with just a ceramic heat emitter, theoretically, um, but because these are such uh, sun-loving species, they really don't do as well. Um, they really, really do a lot better when you give them a nice bright white light to bask under. And then last but not least, to make your life easier, I really highly recommend getting a timer to plug it into. Uh, these Zoomed timers here, if you've only got the one cage, are perfect. Uh, basically what it is, is you set it to, what time is it now? Set it to seven. And you pretty much just have it on, you know, when you're up and off when, at night. And what happens is it'll turn, basically the day plug will turn on when these are up and the night plug will turn on the day plug will turn off and the night plug will turn on when these are down um, for most day geckos i would say you know in the summer keep them with a, a daytime cycle of about 14 hours of daylight in winter you can let it drop down to only 10 or 12. so yeah 14 hours of daylight is going to be ideal that's what i kept mine at at home uh, do what works best for you uh, if you prefer them to have only 12 hours it's entirely a personal call to me uh, I just prefer 14 because that's pretty much I'm me in the morning, you know, before I leave for work and then when I come home from work as well, so I can see him. Uh, go ahead and you just plug that in. Daytime. And this one's Lastly, the food is going to be the last thing that you're going to want to do. Uh, this is the Rapashi uh, Crested Gecko food that I was talking about earlier. Pretty much just mix this with a little bit of water, offer it once or twice a week. Uh, you don't really need to go too overboard on this. I would feed them crickets, mealworms, waxworms, roaches, um, pretty much any kind of insect that's small enough for them to eat. Uh, definitely dust all insects with some kind of calcium. Uh, you can use stuff like mineral, you can use the Zoomad Rept Reptivite, you can use the Rapashi Calcium Plus. It doesn't really matter as long as you as long as you're dusting the food at least every other feeding. Especially for adult geckos, only every other feeding's fine. If you have a really small species like the William's Eye or the other dwarf geckos, maybe every third or fourth feeding, just because they are so small that they would get a lot of calcium if you dusted it every single time. So that's it. That's pretty much how you set up and take care of day geckos. They're honestly really, really easy animals to care for. Uh, you pretty much set them up like this, change their water daily, mist them down at least once, if not twice a day. Uh, you can add a fogger to help add with moisture. For my, again, for my dwarf geckos that I kept at home, uh, I pretty much just had a fogger that went on three times a day for an hour each time. And that ended up fogging up the cage and adding enough water and moisture to the surface of the plants and other things within the cage. They could go and drink that up every day. I just had to water the plants and the rest of the cage about once a week. Uh, so yeah, that's it. We'll go ahead and take a peek at this closer. So that's the, the perch up here. And then you can see the other plants within. Everything that you see in this cage we carry on our website at www.llreptile.com where we have these and all of our available supplies and animals listed. And then for articles about husbandry and other care information, if you want to read uh, my article about uh, breeding day geckos or if you want to hear and learn about other kinds of animals and reptiles that you can keep, uh, definitely make sure you sign up for the Reptile Times. It's a completely free, easy, or online magazine entirely about reptiles and amphibians and the latest and greatest in their husbandry and care. So um, if you would like to learn more, even if you can't keep everything that we write articles about, it is still neat to see all the pictures and learn all the different things that you can do. Uh, so definitely make sure you visit the website and sign up. That's going to be www.thereptiletimes.com. And there you have it. That is a nice basic, well, relatively basic day gecko cage 
you have any questions or if any concerns, make sure you visit our, visit our website and check it out.